How fast can you add up fireball damage? 8d6. Are you pretty quick at it, or does it take you a minute? You guessed it, today we are talking about mathematical anti-telharsic harfatum septonum, or maths. Hi, I'm Peter, creator and lead designer of Tales from Elsewhere, and memes aside, what we're actually here to talk about is a concept in tabletop design called arithmetic burden. So we've got some definitions to go through here and some examples, so let's roll up our sleeves and talk about the math that powers tabletop role-playing games. So, what is arithmetic burden? Arithmetic burden is how much the human brain needs to calculate during the play of your game, both during a session and between sessions or in preparation for a session. It's just how much you're asking of your players to calculate. And so I'm going to steal a few terms from film analysis here and use them to describe types of arithmetic burden. So bear with me, these are kind of funny terms, maybe you've heard them before. So there are diegetic and non-diegetic arithmetic burden. So diegetic arithmetic burden would be the amount of calculation you ask the player moment to moment as they sit at the table and play your game. Things like attack rolls and skill checks or whatever else your game involves. While non-diegetic burden would be how much you ask them to calculate between sessions or in preparation for a session, like character creation or leveling up. It's how much math you expect them to do there. Now, there is no right answer as to how much diegetic or non-diegetic burden you give your players. What we're going to be looking at is how those choices, though, influence the type of game that you are designing. So let's look at some examples and see how those decisions influence these games. So we can start off with one everybody watching this video is probably familiar with, Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition, or the 2024 version. So. D&D sits kind of in the middle of the road as far as burden goes, both diegetic and non-diegetic. I know some folks might argue it's a little on the higher end, some are going to argue it's a little bit the lower end, but I think all in all, it kind of sits in the middle. This is because during character creation, D&D does ask you to do a lot of calculation. Filling out your character sheet actually involves a lot of steps, a lot of numbers, you have various breakpoints when it comes to choosing your attributes, you then have to add up all your skills with your proficiency, calculate your attacks, and so forth. So that's asking a fair bit of you for a fresh player opening the book for the first time. Additionally, D&D asks you to do a moderate amount turn by turn sitting at the table, depending on the character class. Everybody's rolling a 20-sided die and adding various numbers to it, but what you add to that number is just something you find on your character sheet. It doesn't really get modified a lot. The 20-sided die does kind of inherently mean you're often adding two digits together that are a little larger, so maybe that's a little bit more. Once you start mixing in spells, the spells can have a lot of dice and add in additional arithmetic burden, like Fireball or something like a Flaming Sphere, which doesn't have a lot of burden on its own, it's just 2d6 but that is in addition to whatever other math you were doing during your term. So, you know, it's got a moderate amount, but I'm gonna put it kind of middle of the road. Now, D&D is very middle of the road when you compare it to something like Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which is very crunchy, both diegetic and non-diegetic. In Pathfinder, building your character is a very involved process and involves a lot of math, a lot of skill points, a lot of attributes, same deal as 5th Edition, but it's gonna be elevated to another level. Similarly, during your turn in Pathfinder, you're, you're keeping track of action points. You only have a few of them, so it's not too bad. But in addition, there are a number of conditional bonuses that can change the basic arithmetic of whatever skill check, attack roll, or ability you're using. In addition, you get still the same stuff in 5th edition where you have large amounts of dice for spells, so it is asking a lot of you. However, that is a feature, not a bug, of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And that's because it wants that arithmetic burden. That's a draw of the game. It is four players that want all that crunchy math and to build characters that utilize that math to its full potential. Moving on the other end of the spectrum, we're gonna get things like Powered by the Apocalypse or diceless games like Dread, where you're trying to obfuscate the math of the game in favor of more narrative points. Games that would be classified as story first or narrative focused or rules light tend to be more on this side, and there's so many to count here, too many to count. But these ones attempt to remove arithmetic burden 
as that is the goal of the game, to keep the player engaged in the narrative more so than the numbers. These systems often tend to have no hit points or other strange wound systems as well as another vector to remove math. But again, that doesn't mean it's better. It's a different design goal. Now, having looked at those quick examples, where should your game sit? Well, that's a tough decision because that decision is going to influence a lot of factors of your game. It's going to control how fast the combat feels to move, or any scene really. It's going to control how easy it is for new players to come in and play your game, because non-diegetic burden can scare away some players. So it's a very important decision that you want to be cognizant of at every step of the way. Now, the thing I want to caution you on when looking at your arithmetic burden is how much you're stacking it over time. So you could have the simplest, core resolution system. You could just have one d20 plus a static modifier that doesn't really go up or down much, but if you then keep adding features and abilities on top of that, you're going to add up a total that is very burdensome. Even if each calculation is simple, doing several of them in sequence takes more time and is more burdensome on the player. I've seen this a lot where a game purports to have fast combat. But then when I start looking at the rules, I see how much arithmetic burden they're asking their players moment to moment. So as designers, we have to be cautious when we're building these things because we have so much mastery over our system that adding additional burden of arithmetic on ourselves seems easy because we have so much system mastery. And it's easy to become blind to how much you've stacked that over time if you don't test with people that struggle with math a little bit. So with Tales from Elsewhere, we're aiming to be more on the light amount of math, but high on tactical decisions. Because I believe that interesting decisions aren't necessarily mathematically complex ones. I would rather the burden on the player be a glut of interesting decisions to make over necessarily many calculations. So how are we accomplishing this? Or where do we sit on this gradient? So because we do want some math, we're using a D10 and adding a static mod to it. Now those static mods are extremely static. Uh, your skills don't really change. You're never adding anything more than one number to your D10 roll. So that keeps things fairly simple. It also means that should a player want to dig into the mathematics, one D10 plus a static modifier is pretty easy to calculate the odds of. If you know you need to get a six or higher, you can guess that you have about 70% chance to succeed. It's all very easy to do. Hey, Peter from the future here. Uh, that was obviously terrible math. The chances of getting a six or higher on a D10 is 50%. I was thinking at the time, one D10 plus two, needing to get a six or higher, you know, that's a 70% chance. So my bad, it's what I get for recording these without a, a formal script. I like to actually do it in a more naturalistic way, so sometimes I say dumb stuff. So sorry about that, and thanks Tim the Editor for catching it. Uh, there's a link below down to his Ko-Fi if you want to help support him catching my silly mistakes more in the future. All right, back to the video. The reason we wanted to keep that calculation simple but calculatable is because so much of the game hinges on success and failure. Tales from Elsewhere games are very deadly, and so allowing the players to know how likely it is for them to succeed on any given thing and then make judgments and tactical decisions around that is definitely a feature, not a bug. So it involves a little bit of math, but it's not too much, I think. It's not really going to have anything layered on top of that that is a mathematical calculation. The only other type of roll you make in Tales from Elsewhere is an injury roll, and this is a small dice pool where you're looking for the lowest result. So if you're a crack shot with your revolver, you'd roll four eight-sided die, and look for the lowest number. If it's a one, you get a critical injury. If it's a two or a three, it's a serious, and anything above that is strain. There's no real calculation there. No matter how many dice you roll, you're only ever just looking for the lowest single die. Now, the odds of getting one of those results is obfuscated. Dice pools are extremely hard to calculate at the table, and that's intentional. We don't want the player to be attempting to calculate the odds of success. We want them to think about that with a skill test. With a dice pool, all they need to know is adding more dice just increases your chances of success and removing them lowers it. But we don't actually need them to know the exact odds. Now again, the reason we've chosen this point on the gradient is because Tales from Elsewhere's core system involves a lot of tactical decisions. Because we have called shots, 
and the ability to give yourself advantage by using two actions, all these ways to manipulate the success and failure chances of what you're doing, how far away you are from something. Because that is fairly meaty and involves a lot of tactical choice, not a lot of mathematical uh, calculation, we wanted the core resolution, the dice you roll, to not be too burdensome, but to still articulate some information to the player. Because if you go full obfuscation, the player won't really know the odds of success or failure. Now again, there's no right answer here. It's about picking what you think will work best for your game. So if you've made it this far and are working on your own tabletop role-playing game, let me know in the comments what sort of arithmetic burden you would prefer for your game, or if there's games out there that you think hit that balance really nice, let me know. I think this is a fascinating conversation that not a lot of designers bring up. They talk about the quality of the math and the numbers behind it, and I like that too, but not a lot of people are talking about that burden you're asking the brain calculator to manage. So let me know what you think, and as always, like and subscribe, share the video, really helps us out. And if you're really feeling generous, check out our Patreon page where you can help support the creatives behind the channel, those that are making the artwork and doing the editing. All of them are really helpful and wonderful, and we'd like to funnel more money to them. So thank you all, and catch you on the next video.